We are speaking with Moshe Sousa. He's originally from Morocco, born in Morocco, lived in Israel, now lives in Canada, goes back and forth to Israel. He has a brother who has a shul in the Holy Land. Moshe, good to meet you here on seas. So tell us, you were born in Morocco what year? 1941. And how long did you live in Morocco? We, I left uh, Morocco in 1961 and to Israel, mm -hmm. and we left underground illegally, no, illegally because, right? the, because the Moroccan... Morocco authorities forbid uh, Jews to leave after the ruler of Egypt, Nasser, told the king that his, uh, uh, his uh, citizens, Moroccan Jews, are killing the Arabs in Egypt after 1956 war. And he came with a big file and showed all the pictures and said, you have to stop that. And the king and the kingdom of Morocco stopped immigration. They will not give any passports or any visas to get out of the country. So the Israeli Mossad, with a fantastic organization, organized an illegal immigration through different routes, all kinds, through sea, through land, all kinds. So I am one, I, we went of one <coughs> of these, uh, my wife and I, to come to Israel in 1961. Now how'd you go, which way, through land, through, through sea? Through, uh, through, through the, uh, through, we went through the border of, uh, of Spain and uh, of the uh, Moroccan Spanish up north, and we took a very small boat, a fisherman's boat underground, crossed to Algeciras in Spain, and then we were meted by the Aliyah, and they put us in a camp, and, gradual, and then we came to Ores Israel. We went to the kibbutz in Shlosha, and we got married there. Very nice. Now, how many <laughs> Moroccan Jews were? There's many, many Jews left Morocco illegally, and as again in 1961, in the month of Tevet, 23rd of Tevet, in January 13, I believe, at that year, there was a, a boat that went illegally called the Pieces. In every in Hebrew, they called it Egoz, and with 43 illegal immigrants going to Israel with children from one year all the way to 60 years or 70 years and they want to come to Israel illegally and in the ocean there was a, a big storm and the, all the boats sunk hmm. in that boat was also the, the Israeli representative the Mossad uh, Haim Serfati he also passed away so it will be 44 people on, that the, on board that but that on board that boat sank. and then, then they were risked the rescue come too late from Britain and from many because Gibraltar was close by and they rescued only some of the bodies, not all of them. And uh, about 30 years ago, they expatriated all the bodies. Oh, they found all the bodies that died in the in Har Herzl under the Egos tombs. And you could go there sometime and visit because it's very, very, very emotional to see kids from one year, two years, six years, five years families that w left everything and they want really to reach Eris Israel. Yeah, how about Israel? The Moroccan Jews love Israel. What was it like? Were you persecuted? Did you find discrimination from the Arabs in Morocco growing up? No, we really, we really didn't feel any, any, uh, any discrimination. Or, uh, the, actually, the job was myself, I studied in a school that training to be teachers. When the French left, they left a lot of a big vacuum. There's no people to... So they, they, they hired Jews, Arabs, to replace the French, and they, we were, they were, there was no, no national discrimination, really, as per se. But of course, there is a, a, a religious separation, but in, in Morocco, the Arab knows that he's different than the Jew, and Jew knows he's different. So there was no risk of assimilation, because nobody wants the other. <laughs> <laughs> now, you were, grew up in a region of Morocco, Susia, which yeah, has we, a, a rich we, we history, are right? My, my, we are, uh, most of the Jewry, as a matter of fact, Jew, my, the Moroccan Jewry, most of them, before the big cities, because Casablanca was established only in, 19, in 1912. But most of them, except few big cities, uh, most of the Jewry were in the small, small villages on the Atlas, in all the kind of uh, places. So we were, I, I grew up in a very small village in the Atlas, where maybe 70 Jewish families. And we had a uh, header and school and so on, and, and they were very, very uh, natural Zionists. 
It's just no, it's no political science. But isn't isn't your family, or at least a lot of some of the Moroccan Jews in that area, go back to Solomon the King Shlomo Hamel? Yeah, well, the Sous, the name the Sous is a region in Morocco, in southern Morocco. If you know a little bit the geography, you'll go from uh, Agadir, Tarudan, and then Stars. This is the when I was in school, they used to tell us this is the Garden of Morocco, because it's a fantastic area, a lot of of uh, vegetation, fruits, and everything. So we, I, I, my parents, my father came from that region. That's why our name is Suisa. In Arab, it's not Suisa, it's Suessa. Suessa in Arabic is means that the people from the Sus. And as I told you privately, in the Gemara, they, re, they report some of the uh, Jews reaching Africa. And historical, in, in, in international history, Jews were, were there from the king, Moroccan Jews were there from the King Solomon era. And it, it is reported that his son, Boasha bin Shlomo, was the ruler in that region. And if you, and I, as I told you, my mother, in order to scare us, because he was a ruthless ruler, and he was dominating the Arab, Muslims, and Jews. What we call an authoritarian ruler, right? He was very strong. Very strong. And so everybody feared him. And our parents, when they wanted to scare us, we were, t- we were uh, uh, undisciplined or t- and terrible boys. I will bring you Solo Sidi Bu Aisa Sliman. As uh bin Shalom. Everybody was scared of Afraid of Boaz bin Shalom. Even the Arabs were scared, the, right? And so there is a there is a tomb there, a monument that if you could go even today, and the Arabs say that that was their king. So they built also a monument so you could go there and see one for the Jews and one for the Arabs is Baasha bin Shlomo, Baasha bin Sliman in Arabic. So that's why the, um, so the, the actually, the, you know, history, history is, is fantastic when you're getting to know where, where the Jews come from really in, in, in Morocco. In Morocco, many people are, are uh, mistaken. They think that most of the Jews come from the Girush Farad, from the, uh, when the Jews From the expulsion of Jews in Spain in 1490? No, they were very m- small minority. So in Morocco, there were two identities, the Toshavim, and the Migorashim. Tushabim is the people who residents who resi- lived there for residents many years. For many, many years. And the Migorashim came from uh, Spain from in Spain 1492. And Portugal and all But you are very, uh, some people said maximum they came from Leroy, maybe 40,000, all of it. That's what some numbers, some historians. But most of the jury were, were established for many, many years in small villages, in, in small, in small, uh, um, and bad they kept. In our village, for example, it was, uh, we didn't have uh, cars and uh, electricity, and it was very, very... Uh, simple. Uh, simple, very uh, national geographic style. <laughs> so, when we were there, but the Emuna, if I, I, I told my children, I took them, as a matter of fact, about 25 years ago, I took Oh, you went back to Morocco. I, I took to all my to children village, uh-huh. to see from where we came from there. Uh, and I told was it still the same when you went there? A uh, the few changes, not that many. And I told him, listen, if you parachute me in my village, uh-huh. I was isolated for many years, I could tell you exactly what's the date. Why? Because you could feel that in the air. Purim is Purim. Pesach is Pesach. You could see the women going to the, to the river to wash their hair uh, and clean the thing. It was, it was a really pure emuna with no, no politics, no, no nothing. And the tradition was kept very, very, very rigorously and generously. With the, and <coughs> we did, before we had school, before the aliens came to our village, we had heather. We used to learn Torah in the heather with the rabbi and, and to continue the tradition. So that, that's what is the life in Morocco. Then we... Then we, we you went to Israel? And we went to Israel and uh, just I want to make a small... Uh, the parenthesis between this that when the Alliance came, I don't know if you know what's the Alliance. The Alliance is a, is, a, is a Jewish organization that was mostly influenced by the French. It was subsided by the French colon, colonial authority. And their philosophy is a little bit like the Haskalah. It is a derivation of the Haskalah in Europe. What year are we talking about that they came? Talking, they came in, in, in Morocco. First school was established up in northern Morocco in the in the Sefa, in the Spanish region for Morocco in 1880 I believe so they but were like an enlightenment they were more like a Haskalah type Haskalah you say be a Jewish in your home and be like everybody out outside so you know they preach like for for example my name they will not write Moshe they will write Moise or Maurice or so we sub- we somehow 
had that influence. And many of the Jews of Morocco had that influence because the schools are, most of them were from the Alliance. So and they were called aliens? Alliance. Alli- A-L-L-I-E-N-C. So no one, even in America, in Canada, we have that. Uh, in U- U.S. they come. In Israel, they st- up to date, they have schools there. But the, their, their, their goal is to educate the Jew, but the modern way doesn't have to be uh, with uh, P.O.S. and uh, be a Jew. And you make the kosher, make the kiddush, make the whatever, but else, take off your hat. As a matter of fact, when we go to the class, well, we, we are covering our hats with a beret, with a hat. When we go to the class, the teacher will say, remove your hat. And everybody removed their hats. Well, I removed that. Uh-huh. But they had some resistance from the, the secular, from the really top rabbis, but not everywhere. And they, they, they succeeded to educate their way. And that, we had that influence. Then when we came to Israel, the Zionists, we had uh, also the influence of the Zionist uh, secular. Uh, so we we so we we've been. So when you were in, but there was, what, did you get a secular Jewish education? Well, you we your kids in Israel no, eventually. No, no, we, we, no we, in, when we get uh, when we when we were in. Morocco, you already married. You got married in Israel. Yeah, in Israel, we get married. We 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 drifted a little bit. God forgive forgive us. We drifted. You but became more Hashem, secular in Israel. No, but the, the, the kibbutz they don't care what you from where you're coming. If you come from, there. they give you in the tariff to eat. They give you whatever you want. The kibbutz and the So was there kosher in your kibbutz? Nothing. We forced them to bring the kosher you were from Beer Sheva. Uh-huh. We will not eat. Uh-huh. We won't eat. So they had to go to Beer Sheva, bring kosher meal and uh, stuff like that. But the, that that was the kibbutz. But no, we didn't stay there for too long because it was completely against against our uh, traditions, uh, of traditions of Morocco, and Morocco. Yeah. So we went back to the city and we get organized and so on and so on. So that's Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, my story. Pleasure. And now and, uh, and now you're in Canada. Going, and your brother has a shul in Israel. So I'm owed. And thank you for being with. Nice, yeah, nice to meet uh, you. I, um, I hope I uh, we could uh, be used some. No, thank you for sharing. I think it's fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Moshe Suisa, from uh, originally from Morocco, then Israel, and then Canada.